Hello, welcome, thank you for joining me. So in these series of videos, I'd like to show you how to put an exploded assembly into a drawing format and associate a bill of materials and balloons that would identify those individual parts in that bill of materials. And uh, the main reason we want to put a document like this together is because it shows in an assembly format how parts are actually uh, put together into that assembly. Not necessarily how to build the assembly, but uh, to show you the different parts that are associated with it, which may be uh, important to those people who are dealing with the fabrication of this part. And uh, maybe those people who are actually supplying some of the parts are going to go into the, the bidding process in regard to building that part. But it's a very demonstrable document. It's an important document, especially for uh, assemblies, and uh, I'm going to show you how to put that together. So in regard to the document they're going to be putting together, we're going to ha have an exploded view of an assembly and we're anticipating you already have your assembly uh, put together and exploded but I am going to show you how to do the explode line sketch and some of the tricks involved with that and we're going to put a bill of materials together and uh, eventually balloons that identify our parts in order to finish up that drawing so the, for demonstration I'm going to show you an assembly I put together a few years ago for uh, a corrugator which uh, they're actually using in the fields right now it might be, might be a couple weeks after that but what uh, the corrugator does is it has these spinning discs in there with uh, cutting um, teeth on it that actually uh, kind of uh, cut out uh, furrows in the ground in early spring in order to allow for irrigation water to flow down those furrows and this is a part that goes in the back of it, a portion of that part and it's called the gauge wheel assembly so there's a couple different parts that are associated with it. You have the wheel, you have the tire, it's an agricultural tire, and then you have a, you know, some sort of, a, you do have a mounting bracket over here, which uh, we call a dirt scraper support tube. And then we have a dirt scraper in the back, so if a uh, dirt gets uh, kind of lodged up in this, if you have a really wet spring, it kind of scrapes that off in order to allow the machinery to operate uh, effectively. So I'm anticipating that you do have uh, that you do have in an exploded view, which I do, and you can find the exploded view by going to the configuration manager. And I do have a left assembly and a right assembly, and they just vary by having those things in different sides. And I need to configure uh, the bolts and the dirt scraper off of that too for the left side. But we're going to concentrate on the right assembly because it looks a, a lot better in um, in the exploded view. And I do have an exploded view of that. So if you double click on it, you can see what the exploded view looks like which it looks like right there. And I don't know if you remember doing this, I demonstrated this in class, but if you right click on the exploded view for that assembly, you can actually animate the claps and uh, the explosion of it, so to speak. What you do is you get an animation controller, which is embedded in SolidWorks, is actually taking uh, you know, the top window over this, so this is going to run before anything else runs in background. But you have the ability to, uh, right, right now I have it on playback mode, reciprocation for playback mode. You can also do the loop. If you click on that, what it does is it just infinitely loops from uh, one to the other. Or you can just go in one direction and when it gets done with it, it stops. You want to save it? That's the save button. If you want to save your assembly, you can go ahead and do it by clicking on that and then go through the steps involved with that. So let's go ahead and close that uh, animation out. And let's go back in the exploded view and explode that. This looks like my explode line, explode line sketch is actually shown, so I'm going to go right right click and then go to edit sketch, and there it shows it. So what it does is it puts in a, uh, I believe it's a phantom line uh, on a 3D line format, or a 3D sketch format I should say, and what it does is it connects uh, one part to another. And just to demonstrate that, let me go ahead and emulate some of the line sketches that we have here. So the way you do that, right click on it, go to, uh, let's see, let's go back to assembly, go to the assembly tab in the uh, command manager, make sure you have a uh, explode line sketch selected. If it doesn't really give you a dialog box over here, let's go ahead and click that one more time, and yet yeah, a third time we'll click that until you get this dialog box which asks for your route line. So what you want is you want items to connect. It doesn't really tell you that, but this open box here will allow you to connect at least two items and maybe more and it'll connect those together. So just to demonstrate that, let's go ahead and click the bottom of our uh, of this bolt and we're going to try to emulate the path from this bolt to that washer. Now wherever you click your mouse is going to go ahead and start that. So whether it be close to the edge or somewhere in the middle, you know, that's okay. You want to keep, it, uh, keep in mind uh, where that arrow is because that will determine uh, how that's going to get routed. But if you really want it in the middle of that, let's go ahead and click on the edge of that bolt and it'll actually put the the line that's going to come from the from that bolt it actually come from the very center of that 
So let's click on that, and then let's click on the corresponding edge of the circular edge of uh, the inside of that washer, and bang, it goes right in place. You can do the green check mark here, or you do have the ability to manipulate some of uh, the way some of these lines look. The lines that aren't man manipulatable, you'll notice that you'll get uh, these uh, with these magenta lines. You have these little pull pull tabs on them that you can uh, take those lines and move them around a little bit. You could also do that in the 3D sketch format once you exit that. What you can't alter is this line. You can't get those little pull tabs to uh, show up in that uh, on this line here because it's connected to that arrow. These arrows actually mean something when you uh, are trying to sketch from uh, an object here, like the bottom of this bolt. Let me see if I can get some white space in the background. Uh, what it means is that that uh, line is going to come from where that arrow is, and when it finally gets to the object it's going to connect to, then uh, the arrow actually points to that object. So it might be a little bit deceiving. If you can't remember which one you started from, you can see the results though of it if you actually reverse those arrows. If you take that arrow and reverse it, it's now going to come in from the bottom, which really isn't the path we want. We really want that bolt to come in from the top, and then from that, uh, from that washer, to actually go into the slot up here. So you can see the, the, the difference here too. If you were to click on that, that arrow and reverse the arrow direction on the bolt, again it gives us something that's really not quite what we're looking for. You can also change it up here by clicking on the reverse button. Yeah, it looks like it just reverses the end uh, of that too. So there's a couple different options there. Oops. <coughs> Okay, so that's what we want to do. Reverse actually reverses uh, where it comes in on the end. And if it's uh, pretty close to what you like, what you're looking for here, and let's not choose that face, let's go ahead and choose that edge. That's pretty close to what we're looking for. We're going to go to the green check mark and call that done. Now, when you're in the explode line sketch uh, format here, when the sketches are actually showing, these are 3D sketches. You can take these sketches and still move those around within the parameters that um, allow it to. There are some constraints I already put in there. And just like with our regular sketching on planes that we've done in SOLIDWORKS, you can delete some of those constraints there too. So right now we have a perpendicular constraints uh, on that line with the two other lines that are associated nearby it. So if you do like that, that's how we do that. And we're going to go ahead and keep that and not do any more on that. And on the next film, we'll start in on the drawing format and putting uh, this assembly, this exploded assembly, into that drawing.